just miracles and I mean causing the main to be whole. That's still the one that just boggles my mind. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. People coming up and their legs cut off, and the Lord's touching them and their leg regrows. But uh, just a real neat answer to prayer. Um, the video that I did about the attacks, current attacks on the ministry, um, there were two cases, open cases left of the guy. I, I, you know, showed his information, things just, 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 you know, showed his information, things just to, to show people how these infiltrators work and everything else. And uh, so uh, people that try to infiltrate, we're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. We're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. We're going to be able to have access to their full name, address, the whole deal. Uh, unlike dealing with liberals that don't protect while uh, leaving Christians like, you know, myself and you if you're a friend of the ministry. All right, going to show you Brian Denlinger actually mimicking a lot of the same bitterness and anger that Steven Anderson has in uh, his recent stream. So Brian Denlinger recently did a live stream where he was, you know, going against the pagan Catholic church buildings. And at one point, somebody asks him a question or, or basically says to him that, you know, not all church buildings are bad. And I said in my other video that, that I agree with that statement in the sense that in terms of doctrine, they're, they're sound in terms of like, well, they're pre-trib, they're dispensational, they understand the things about Israel. But uh, besides the point, uh, when the person says that in the comments, Brian goes on this big, huge rant and it just, just, just reveals all this bitterness and wrath. I mean, the flesh was just taken over like crazy in that video. Okay, here's the clip and I'm going to show you how it mirrors the same kind of bitterness and anger that Steven Anderson shows towards his followers. Okay, here's the clip. Of course, you know, I see one of your comments here. Not all trash churches are trash. Okay, I, this whole argument. Well, my church doesn't do it and I, I have a church and we don't listen. Here's how the system works. If it's not, first and foremost, if it's not supported by the King James Bible, you have no business doing it, okay? When it comes to worship and whatever, I, you know, I know there's no Ford trucks in there or Chevy cars or something. Don't get idiotic here. But when it comes to something like church, it's clearly defined in the King James Bible. There's no question. There's no debate what a church is. It's the people, all right? And you can meet in a home, you can meet in a field, you can meet in the mountains, along the ocean, along the lake, wherever you want to. You say, well, can't we meet in the building and call it a church? No, because then you're, just, you're changing the definition of what a church is. So number one, you're in disobedience to scripture if you have a building called a church, plain and simple. And then you have the double life that's, that comes as a result of that. What I do when I'm in church and what I do when I'm not in church. I've dealt with this stuff for years and years. I've answered all the questions. It's ridiculous. But, you know, oh, well, my church doesn't do it. Okay, let's just assume that for a minute. But what happens when the government takes over? Just finally says, okay, this is the way it's going to be and whatever else and things like they basically did in 2020. Guess what? They all went along with it. Well, we had a church in the middle of nowhere and we have, you know, eight people that go there and we didn't mask up and we didn't do this and we didn't do that well then you're just useless quite frankly now here's the thing i'm a former member of the new ifb i used to be heavily into the new ifb when i was a false convert or a religious atheist as i call it if you know in my testimony i used to be a godless atheist and i became a religious atheist because i was a false convert part of the stephen anderson's new ifb call and I've seen how the new IFB people act and the way the bitterness and wrath that Brian and his followers show is very identical to how I saw Anderson and the new IFB goons behave as well. Okay, here's a clip of Stephen Anderson uh, screaming and yelling at his congregation for supposedly, I guess, not reading the Bible or whatever. I mean, this is not how a shepherd, a bishop is supposed to treat his flock. Okay, but Brian Dillinger, you're, you're going to see the similarities, just the bitterness and wrath come out. Watch this. Did you bother to read it before you handed it out? Did you read it first before you handed it out? Probably not. And I can guess why. Because the same kind of person who's too lazy to read the back of the church track is the same kind of person who's too lazy to read their Bible cover to cover. And it's the same kind of people who want to go by what somebody says instead of what this book says. And listen to me. This church has always stood for the same thing, and it came out of this book right here. Amen. And let me tell you something, buddy. You better read this book, and you better read the track, and you better know what you're doing.
You say, why are you so mad? Let me tell you why I'm so mad. Because I'm sick and tired of what Faithful Word Baptist Church is turning into. This is a great church. This is the best church I've ever been to. And I don't like what it's turning into. Because I'll tell you what it's turning into. It's turning into a bunch of people who don't know what they're talking about. Because they only just are a parrot who repeats Pastor Anderson. Now again, I'm not saying it's the majority because it's not. But let me tell you something. and You listen to me good. I'm not talking to people that are new. I'm not talking to people that have only been in church at Faith Word for a few months. I'm not talking to people that are new. But let me tell you something. If you are in this church, and you've been in this church for a substantial amount of time, and you've never read this book cover to cover, you are not right with God, and you are nothing more than just parroting what Pastor Anderson said, or what you think he said, what I didn't even say. What I didn't even teach. You don't know what you're talking about. Let me quote Brother Chris Sosi. I like the way he put it. If you haven't read the Bible cover to cover, you don't know nothing. And I agree with you, Brother Chris. If you don't read it cover to cover, you don't know nothing. And let me tell you something. You can go, you can go out and, and, and go out and do a bunch of soul winning and go out there and work and work and work, but know what you're talking about because you read this book. Amen. And you're off balance, my friend. If you got time for everything else, you got time to go out and, and, and talk to everybody doc about doctrine. You got time to chit chat about doctrine and talk about all this stuff. You got time to get on the internet on some forum or some chat room or YouTube or Facebook or whatever. Talk a bunch of doctrine. Why don't you make the time to read this book? And the sad thing is that many people who think they're going to be a preacher one day are the ones that are the guilty ones that I'm talking about. Because they think they're going to preach one day and their preaching is going to be garbage. Yep. Because let me tell you about garbage. Garbage is something that's regurgitated up. It's vomit. And let me tell you something. Unless you read the Bible for yourself and learn what you believe for yourself, all you're doing is chewing up Pastor Anderson's sermon... Chewing it up, swallow it, and then you just get up and just, You know, the sad reality is there really is not much difference between Brian Dunlinger's uh, cult that he runs and Stephen Anderson's new IFB cult that he runs as well. There really is not much different in terms of how they behave and how they treat those who uh, go against the leader, the Pope. There's not much difference. I mean, you know, I, I saw personally, you know, I, I witnessed how Adam Fannin was treated by the new IFB. You know, obviously, I'd have my disagreements with Adam Fannin doctrinally, but I saw how he was treated by the new IFB goons for going against Steve Anderson. And the same, and, and then one of the reasons why I essentially, well, after being stabbed in the back by Brian's cult, obviously, one of the things that really kind of started waking me up to Brian was when, how I saw, when I saw how they treated Tim for going against Brian. You know, when I saw that, it was very identical to how I saw the new IFB goons treat Adam Fannin. You know, the way that Tim was treated by Brian and his followers for questioning Brian Dillinger, essentially. You know, it's very similar. There's very little difference between Brian Dillinger's group and the new IFB. Here's a verse of scripture I want to just, a couple of verses I want to just end off with. Some verses that Brian is failing to adhere to uh, severely. Ephesians 4.31, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from among you with all malice. Uh, Colossians chapter 2, ver or 3 verse 8, but now you also... Now, but now you also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Uh, Brian has not done that. Then, of course, you got uh, Proverbs chapter 14, verse 17. He that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked, devi of wicked devices is hated. That's why Brian Dellinger is, is, is uh, being so-called persecuted, because he, he's bringing it upon himself through his bitterness and wrath and wickedness. And, of course, you got... And of course, too, I want to point this out as well. You read the qualifications for, or you read the the uh, how Peter when it was exhorting the elders in First Peter chapter five verses one to five. Uh, Brian Dillinger is behaving, is violating, how, is violating that basically. He's not behaving how an elder is supposed to behave, according to First Peter chapter five verses one to five. You can read it yourself. But the other scripture I wanted to bring up is uh, where was it? Yeah, it was right. It was Proverbs chapter uh, Proverbs twenty four. Verse 2. For their heart studies destruction and their lips talk of mischief. Yeah, that's, that's uh, Brian Dillinger, unfortunately, right there. So, 
I wanted to show you guys that. Brian Dillinger is very not much different than Steven Anderson in many ways. They've got a lot of similarities in how they act and treat those who disagree and how they even treat their own followers. So anyway, I just wanted to show you that. Uh, again, Mark and avoid Brian Dillinger. Uh, he is very spiritually toxic. I'm doing these videos on him because I was a follower, just like how I was a follower of, new, of the new IFB Anderson cult. I used to be heavily into Brian Dillinger's ministry. So I'm, a, I'm an insider. I know how these guys are. And, you know, people need to be warned about Brian Dillinger may very well be a saved man, but he's very, very carnal and very, very prideful and needs to, to be warned against and needs to step down from ministry until he can get this, this pride issue, this pride and bitterness worked out. So anyway, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.